This is Tejetes Limonii, Mexican marigold, and it is a uh, perennial slash woody shrub. Gets uh, three feet, three to six feet tall and wide, and uh, the opening shot was probably the best representation I've seen of a mature one, and I would say that's kind of five feet tall by three and a half to four feet wide. So if I'm spacing these, if I'm using more than one, I would tell you that's a good spacing in design. Although it's such a strong plant, uh, it's not one that I would be using in large groupings. The yellow color is very bold and bright and it can tend to overwhelm other plants if you're uh, if you're getting too crazy with large quantities of these so for me it's more of a singular play in a design here's a good close-up of the foliage it's kind of finely divided um, it's pinnately compound I, I believe and um, this is the foliage coming out new so it has these little daisy like flowers and and hundreds of them when the plant is in full bloom and um, it's a it's a very useful plant near the coast and why I say that is is that uh, I'm in an inland valley where we get down into the 20s degree Fahrenheit uh, during the winter and these are marginal where we are uh, I see them but I don't see old ones and I don't see and I see them burn back and I, as a result I don't use this plant a lot in our area. Um, I've seen these, this one here you're looking at is in Pacific Grove, California and uh, these do great by the coast. They like the more moderate winter, they like the uh, year-long growing season, you get more bloom out of them and they bloom a very long time. Uh, they can have flowers on them virtually all year if you deadhead them uh, you'll get stronger flushes of bloom but uh, winter into spring is their strongest bloom time and when you're looking at this now this is a spring bloom that you're looking at here so uh, good companion plants are to follow but again coastal plants something like salvia lucantha is a really nice companion because of the purple flowers with this yellowy gold that you see in the tagetes and um, again singular play for me in terms of how many because they're just large plants you just don't need a lot of it to make quite a statement uh, they prefer sandier well-drained soils the deer absolutely do not eat this plant uh, this is my father's uh, front yard and he has one of the worst deer problems I've ever dealt with and the deer leave it alone it is very pungent in terms of its foliage by the way and that's why the deer leave it alone it's one of the most it's one of the strongest smelling foliages um, I've ever smelt and I you know it's not one of my favorites it's not I wouldn't avoid using it obviously but just know that if somebody's sensitive to that uh, you want to make them aware of it and have them check it out I don't really care for the smell but again unless you're brushing up against it it's not like you can smell it when you're near the plant um, and I would also say that uh, it does need deadheading so in terms of maintenance to look its best these flowers are going to die on the plant and they're going to leave behind brown seed he flower heads so looks a lot better if it's deadheaded um, after it does its flushes of bloom so I'd say it's moderate in terms of its uh, need for maintenance um, and I think that's it. A oh, water, uh, moderately drought tolerant, but likes kind of regular to low water. Um, and then full sun. If you're going to use this, use it in full sun. Blooming plants like this generally do need full sun to do their best bloom. So that's what I can tell you about Tagetes limonii. Nice uh, flowering shrub, very long bloom cycle. And as you're starting to see here, these are some nice companion plants to consider uh, when using the Mexican marigold. Enjoy.